Hey everybody, my name is Anastasia and thank you for clicking on another video. Today I'm going to be recording my very first charcuterie table, also known as a grazing table. And basically it's just a spread and an assortment of different meats and cheeses and fruits and vegetables. So this is my very first time doing this and I figured it would be really fun to record it and make a video out of it. Now it is Thanksgiving here and my family is here so I am going to be doing the majority of this video in a voiceover format just so you don't hear any background noise because that can get a little annoying. Um, so if you would like to see how I create my very first uh, charcuterie table then just continue watching. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually wash and drain all of the fruit. As you can see, I have all of my ingredients already set out because once I get the brown paper down and get everything set up, I'm going to quickly do uh, the placement of all the food. So first I'm just going to prepare all the fruits and vegetables. So I'm just starting off by rinsing the grapes. I have an empty drain in the sink, so I'm just gonna place the fruit and vegetables there. I'm doing the cherry tomatoes, leaving them in their container because they will drain through it. I have some sweet little mini peppers that I'm just washing and I'm going to put out whole. And we ended up not using the carrots for this charcuterie table, but I went ahead and washed them anyway and we used them with our roast. Now I took the little Fiji Gala apples. These are so delicious and they're great for kids. My son loves them. So I wanted to put some out on the board so he felt like there was something for him to pick. I also got a cantaloupe melon as well as watermelon, which goes really well with prosciutto and also cheeses. So that's why I chose to do that. Um, also, if you'll notice here, I'm cutting up each individual slice to be bite-sized pieces. This will really stretch your fruit. I just got one pack of each, um, and it was super easy to just cut them up and uh, make them more for individual um, portions. So that's definitely something that will stretch the fruits and vegetables that you get. It also makes for a pretty presentation as well. Now you can see here, I'm just cutting off. Just pay attention if they missed like some of the white rind. That's never good to get a big mouthful of. Now I'm going to cut up the cantaloupe a little bit smaller um, bites than the watermelon. Um, this worked out to be really great because this goes well with prosciutto. So you could just wrap it right on your little bite sized piece and then eat them together really easily and then just throw away the rind. This also looks really pretty um, for a pop of color and some texture. You always want to keep in mind when you're making these that you want to do different shapes and different colors and that's what's going to make it really pop because a lot of the crackers and the cheeses are kind of bland neutral colors. So adding the pop of fresh fruit and all the different colors from the jams, um, it just looks really nice. Now I'm not quite ready to use the fruit yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some saran wrap on it to make sure that it stays nice and moist, and also that no little flies or anything land on it. So I'm just kinda like putting this off to the side until I'm ready to place it on the table. Now I am wrapping the countertop with just a little brown paper. This is like packaging paper. My mom had a roll in the garage, so I just took some of the exposed roll and just threw that out and then got down to the clean roll and cut a piece from there. And then I just secured it with a little uh, duct tape to the actual countertop so it didn't slide around. Now I'm just placing this large um, cutting board in the center. This is gonna be the focal point and a lot of the wet um, fruits will go on here and vegetables and things that will basically ruin the paper. That's gonna go up on the board. Now I'm just kind of like unpacking all the bags and kind of starting to place things in categories. I do wanna start off with getting some of the big, bigger items out of the way and just kind of placing things um, in random places so I could see what looks best. You can see me doing that here. And then I'm going to start with the cheeses first and then um, you'll see kind of how I prepare them. We'll go through each one. So this cheese I believe was a cheddar 
and Jack, um, I think cheddar and Colby Jack, one of those mixed cheeses, and I am just slicing it into rectangles and they're gonna go out in that shape. The next one is a cheddar and mozzarella and it is a softer cheese, but what I'm going to do with this one is I'm actually going to crumble it into random sizes and shapes. This just gives more texture to the actual charcuterie table and it makes everything look like it's fancy. And all I'm doing is taking the corner of my knife and twisting it into the cheese and breaking it apart roughly. So there doesn't need to be any clean lines or accuracy during this part of it. This next cheese is just a mild cheddar and I'm going to do small little cubes with this one. After cutting a few individually, I realized I should just line them all up and make my life easier and just cut a bunch of them at once. So that's what you see me end up doing here, finishing up this block of cheese. This part was fairly easy and the cheese was rather affordable. I got a lot of the ingredients from Publix. I also went to one of our local markets here to get different ingredients like the prosciutto as well as the olives and some of the dried nuts and fruits. Um, so definitely went on a little scavenger hunt to get everything put together for this, but it was so much fun. So as you can see here, I'm setting up little cheese stations throughout the entire board to make sure that there's little goodies in all spaces on the paper. Now I'm taking little mozzarella balls and they are kind of wet, so I'm going to put them in a bowl and keep them in the bowl so that way they're not going to bleed through the paper and make a mess. So you just want to keep that in mind with some of the ingredients. A lot of this is just dumping and you know putting it right on the paper but you do want to keep in mind those wetter ingredients and um, place them in little dishes. Now the dishes that I got were actually from the dollar store so you don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to have a ton of dishes. I spent $20 at the dollar store and I bought pretty much all the containers for this table. Now I am working on the cheese, some more cheese. <laughs> this one is a brie and I was just reading the packaging here because I did think about baking it but ended up deciding not to do that because it would be cold by the time people were eating it anyway. So I just cut off the top rind and I end up placing that right towards the front of the large cutting board. I always think this is such a beautiful cheese to display and I love to see it with different jams so you'll see what I do with it later. Now this is a soft cheese. This is a garlic and herb um, borsin cheese and that one is super delicious. Now I am cutting open my mountain white bread from Publix and I am taking Publix Buffalo Chicken Dip and I'm just filling the space with that. Super easy, super fast, and you don't have to make a ton of things. I did make the chicken salad for this, um, but that was pretty much one, the only thing that I made for this charcuterie table. So now the excess bread that I cut out, I'm just roughly chopping that and I'm going to put that around the dip so that people can utilize that bread. It doesn't go to waste and it gives some more texture. It gives some filler to the board as well. I think that was really key was like filling up every space on the board just looks so nice and really gives the look that you're going for when creating a table like this. So now I'm taking a loaf of pumpernickel and these I got right from Publix and they weren't sliced, they weren't pre-sliced. So that worked out great. I didn't have to special order it, but sometimes you do have to special order that. So just keep that in mind. So I just cut off the top and I'm now taking Publix spinach dip and I'm going to stuff the bread with that as well. And these just make such pretty bowls and I just love to do. I think it looks fancy and I just love to do it. And then I'm going to take the excess bread and do the same thing, just chop it up and I'm going to place that around the base of the spinach dip so people can just grab and dip from there. Next up is the goat cheese. So this was on sale for buy one, get one free at Publix. 
So I did get two and it was just like the hit of the day. And then this is some raw honeycomb that I got from a local beekeeper. And I'm just cutting up small pieces of the honeycomb and placing it right on top of the goat cheese. This just makes it look so fancy and it is so, so, so delicious, especially with pita chips. Um, I actually got this idea from a local um, restaurant we have here in town and they serve homemade pita chips with um, goat cheese and honey and it is just superb. Here's me giving little samples out because they've never tried it before so my parents loved it. Now I'm just taking some excess honey and I'm pouring it in a little bowl to keep right next to it so that way you can drizzle it over your food and I'm just drizzling some excess honey on top just to give some more um, eye-catching appeal. Now I'm taking some apricot preserves and I'm gonna put that with the brie. That was delicious as well. Now I just put out my garlic um, stuffed green olives and my breadsticks are going out. These were super affordable. I think I found them at Publix um, or possibly the market. And I think they were like $1.29 each for a box of breadsticks. So it just makes everything look a little fancier. Now I'm putting out some of the different trail mix and nuts. And now I'm going to grab into the cold cuts and start placing the meat. Now when doing this, you just want to keep in mind um, that some of the meat is greasy, some of the ham is juicy, so I put the ham and um, the wetter meats up top and then I just put the salami down on the bottom. So now I'm just breaking apart the prosciutto and I'm just breaking it into like small pieces because if you, some tables you will find that they'll put a whole strip of the prosciutto and I just think it's a little too much. I like bite-sized pieces so I did break them up into about three different pieces from each slice which makes them bite-sized and also makes the meat stretch a lot longer. Usually prosciutto is the first to go and it's one of the more expensive meats. So for this, I got this freshly sliced at Publix and I got a half a pound of the prosciutto. Now I'm just rolling up the ham, stacking that neatly in the back. And then I also have a maple turkey on this board as well as the Genoa salami. I did about a half pound of each meat um, for this particular table. Obviously, you can adjust that to the size based on how many guests you're going to have. We had about 10 people come through, um, so I wanted to make sure that we had more than enough for everyone because I figured some people would take some of the meat to make sandwiches with. There were different breads and croissants on the table, so that way they were able to do that. And you figure each person will munch on at least two or three pieces. So that's kind of how I came to the um, conclusion of how much to get. And you can see me here, I'm just folding over the salami. So again, taking different approaches to folding or rolling, giving different shapes. The salami was difficult to roll. It just kept unrolling. So that's why I decided ultimately to do the half, but I did like the way it turned out. So now I'm taking some thicker sliced salami that I bought and I'm just putting them in random places. So you can always fill the space and just kind of sprinkle things throughout. It doesn't all have to be in one location. So just know that you can fill different areas using the same product. And now I'm just rolling up some Munster cheese that I had thinly sliced. And I'm rolling up probably like eight to 10 pieces here because I figured that would be more than enough and we can always add to it. This cheese in particular is very thinly sliced. So it, when it gets room temperature, it's not gonna keep its composure. So that's why I decided to only put a few slices of this one out. Now I got several different cracker elements. This is a like cheddar biscuit. And then I also got these Parmesan crisps, which are beautiful. They really made the table look nice and elegant and they were super affordable. I think it was maybe $2 for the box and I just got one box of them from Publix and I was able to spread them out in multiple areas on this charcuterie table and it just made it look so fancy. And you can see here, I'm just fanning them out and letting them kind of naturally fall in a line. 
and they were lined up in the box to begin with so that makes it super easy and as you go you just want to make sure that you're sweeping away any excess crumbs and just keeping the area really clean so that way it looks crisp and elegant and intentional i utilized a lot of dry fruits and vegetables this is sun-dried tomatoes i also had dried cherries dried cranberries as well as raisins and lots of other goodies for this table i got banana chips and yogurt covered raisins and malt balls so there is a sweet element i got a borson cheese that was actually um it's cinnamon and apple so i got that to be by the fruit and i got pretzels that were honey wheat which are super delicious what i'm pouring now is actually some pitted dates these were really good as well they're kind of like a large mild raisin so they just look really beautiful and they go really well with the cheeses so now i'm taking out the fruit and i'm going to start setting up this area now now the fruit i'm leaving on a glass cutting board because obviously again i don't want to soak up the paper so this really came in handy to make sure that uh, the paper stayed intact so I'm taking some of the cantaloupe and I am putting that around near the prosciutto to let people know that it's intentional to eat it together because you have so much on here sometimes people are gonna be like where do I do what do I eat with what so you kind of want to guide them in that sense you can also label the table um, I didn't have time to do it and I didn't have little signs to do it so um, I didn't have a chance to on this one but you can label everything as well so that way your guests aren't constantly asking, but I didn't mind. So now I'm putting out honey wheat crackers. So these have a little bit more of a sweetness to them. And I'm intentionally placing them near the dessert cheese to let everybody know, again, this is sweet stuff over here. Um, so that way they're not, you know, dipping a carrot in the sweet cheese. I'm just taking those crackers, placing them out. One, I think I just stayed with one. Uh, roll of the Ritz so really a little goes a long way with this you don't need to use the whole box now I'm just taking out a few little mini dill pickles and I'm going to be placing that near the sandwiches and the spinach dip so now I'm just using um, the Stacy's naked pita chips these are delicious and i placed those by the goat cheese and i'm just kind of looking for any open spaces and just filling them up at this point um, now we're just kind of in the final stretch of getting this put together so it's pretty pretty fast when you get to this point point. and these are those twisted braided honey wheat pretzels i was telling you about these are delicious especially with that cinnamon apple cheese ah they're so good now I'm putting out some of the additional fruit. We got some little clementines here. I'm just gonna place those out. And you can see here, I'm just making sure that all the fruits and vegetables that I washed are really draining properly uh, before I put them out. I want them to be good and dry. Now I'm taking out the chicken salad and the tuna salad, and I'm going to be making some little croissant sandwiches as well as putting some roasted red peppers out. My mom also made a chicken liver pate, and I also threw in just for fun, some Japanese gummies, as well as marshmallows, which the kids and the adults loved. So this was definitely a fun project for me and I had a lot of fun doing it and my family loved it, so that made me happy. I'm going to cut the video at this point, finish everything up and do a last minute scan over. So that way this video is not too long and right now my battery is about to die. So I will see you when we are all finished. All right. So this is the completed charcuterie table. First time doing this and I am so impressed. We don't even want to eat off of it, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I'm eating. I'm eating. Michael's behind, he can't wait to. He can't Mom, wait to stop. put the full monkey on that. I had so much fun creating this. I am so happy with how it turned out. And if you enjoyed watching this video, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you guys. I hope you had a wonderful holiday and I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you would like to see more videos like this or if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section below. Again, thank you so much for watching another video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!